Uh, but did win last weekend in Baltimore in a slightly different format. And Stephen Mao is going to be playing Charizard Pidgeot. So Matus here, what have we got? Stuttgart regional champion, world's top 64, and a couple other top 32s to boot. Yeah, I think we did that with uh, Vikovolt, that Stuttgart regional champion. That's the event I was at. Knows his way around the Pokemon TCG. Currently test and um, practices a lot with Henry Brand, the 2019 world champion. But again, Stephen Mao knows his way around the Pokemon TCG. 2012 World's Top 16, World's Top 32, 2022, EUIC Top 16, and Arnhem Regional Top 4 as well. I was at 2022 Worlds, and I can tell you I was nowhere near the Top 16 in that particular event. Um, it was fun, though. That was the last time we were in Hawaii before 2024, just a couple of months ago. So, looks like both players are rolling, and oh, I've seen something spicy. I tell you what, it's listed here as a Gardevoir deck, Shay. Yeah, but it's not, is it? It's not really a Gardevoir, and in fact, uh, no, I am, I am saying, I'm officially saying, we scrub that, it is not a Gardevoir deck. No, it's not. Because sure, it's got a 3-4-2 Gardevoir line, but you know what it's got a 4-4 four, four line of? What's that? I think I know, but tell the people anyway. It's Baynet. We got three yeah. of the EX and one of the single prize that recovers a supporter card from your discard pile. Uh, and then it really does look like a 3 4 2 line of Gardevoir, which is awkward, but essentially the Curlier is that important. Ooh. Right? What are you seeing? What are you seeing? What are you moving? Steven's prize, that prime catcher. Oh my goodness, the ace back, and it is at the top as well. Win and end. Here we go. Swiss round six is about to get started. Matusk on the left versus Steven. Let's see how we go. And Steven has started that one copy of Rotom V in the active, but we'll start the turn with a buddy buddy puff him. Not too bad. That Rotom is often something you want to use on turn one anyway here. So you go and search out a couple of basics. And being this Charizard deck, you want to go and get Pidgey and Charmander nice and early. The deck, generally speaking, goes like this. You've got your Pidgeot, which searches any card during your turn. You've got your Charizard that does big damage, accelerates energy to itself with its ability, and becomes stronger the more prizes your opponent has taken. With a bit of cheeky Dust Noir thrown in there, and Briar, and Radiant Charizard. There's a few tricks, but what, what can you tell me about Baynet, Shay? Baynet is a very, very fun card. And Matez loves a little bit of item lock here, because that's what Baynet likes to do. With its uh, in everlasting darkness attack for one psychic energy, does 30 damage and stops your opponent from any item cards next turn. Worth noting as well that Poltergeist attack can really add up from Baynet, which does 60 for each trainer card in your opponent's hand. Yeah, so Steven there has got the Pidgey and the Charmander. Looked like he was, uh, excuse me, just, you know, pointing towards that Rotom, but it looks like considering whether we play an Ultra Ball, we do play an Ultra Ball. Always a big consideration whether you save it to try and get a stage two next turn, but it does look like Steven really Really looking for one more basic here. Really looking for that over anything else. It is a second Charmander. Really trying to make sure that they get that Charizard going nice and early. Worth knowing, off that Ultra Ball, we do see that does Klops it in a discard pass. Steven does play a one, well, a two, one, one line, I should say. So there will be no Dust Klops available as unless any Super Rod is played. But I was going to see an end of turn over the instant charge that you draw the top three cards of your deck, but it ends your turn. And at this point, here's the deal. Does Steven know that Matus is playing a Bayonet deck? Or is he still thinking it's a regular Gardevoir deck? He knows now because that Ultra Ball did discard a copy of Bayonet EX. And now Matus will be able to sort of look through the deck, work out exactly what's prized and what isn't. And the fact that Steven hasn't immediately picked up that Bayonet says he probably saw it. When you're on the top tables, you do tend to see what the other top players are playing. So it looks like here we got an Ultra Ball, and it's, you know, standard turn one deck search. You've got one Routes on the field. What else can you get? Yep, fantastic there. Matus is going to just do a little bit of prize checking there as well. There seems to be no sort of super obvious answers here off this early Ultra Ball. Mew EX obviously can let you draw some cards via that restart ability. You can also attack in the guard of our deck very easily, like genome hacking. Yep. And then you use your, one of your opponent's active Pokemon's attacks as this attack. 
shout out to the crew backstage for putting that print of Mui X yeah. up. The U.S. coming out there, absolutely phenomenal. But there's quite a lot of his needs here. Obviously, you're trying to get some shop it down if you're thinking Baynet can work in this matchup. You need to get, you know, another routes down if you're going for Gardevoir here. There's quite a lot you really need to try and establish when you're moving forward. So we see a second Ultra Ball here for a single shop it. And look, this is not an efficient use of resources. Using two Ultra Ball, discarding four cards to get a Mew and a shop it is not really what... Well. That could have been like a nest ball and half of a Buddy Buddy Poffin. Yeah. I mean, well, not the most efficient. This restart could be really important, actually. I haven't had a chance to see what else is in Matusk's hand there, but it's going to have to be pretty important to get sort of get out of this. We do this as a basic energy, as it were. So restart for three. What's that? Nest ball, Iono, and, and an a basic energy. energy. Uh, supporter card, I don't think, has been played yet, so the Iono can come down quite nicely. Nest ball actually goes for the Spirit Tomb nice and early. Spiritomb, of course, turn off abilities of Pokemon V. And given that Steven has got that Rotom in play, it's quite nice to say to Steven, look, I'm, I'm, en I'm using Iono here. Almost went back a few years there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm using Iono here. I'm putting you down to a fresh hand of six. And I'm going to try and make sure that you've got to have it in this hand. Because your Pidgeot's not established and your Rotom's turned off. Yeah. Fantastic, I yeah, miss you uh, making that row. Um, a two prize liability of 190 HP, the Iron O being played there. Um, both players going to get six, and the hand goes to the bottom. Also makes that instance charge from the row to, well, useless for lack of a better term, because all those cards are at the bottom. Let's see what Matersk has here. We'd love, to see, we'd love to see some rolls, another rolls if possible, some draw power, maybe a second shop it so you're sort of. Boss's orders proof as it were. I don't see any of that in the hand. I see a lot of supporters, a basic energy, maybe a shop it off the top of my head, but it's not looking terrible, terribly great. It's we not. need to see another vault, ideally, so if your active gets KO'd, at least you have another one. Yeah, now this is a big turn. If Steven goes and gets a rare candy Charizard here, or, you know, ideally that and a Pidgeot, that's amazing. Baynet's Everlasting Ooh. Darkness turns off item cards. Here comes Arvum, yeah. because Everlasting Darkness is going to stop rare candy. And in Steven's deck, there is standard one Charmeleon, no Pidgeotto. So you need to get your stage twos established before Matus can go and turn it off. Because Everlasting Darkness, when you haven't had a rare candy yet, is brutal. So here's the rare candy to Steven. Oh, yeah, there's an Ultra Ball in hand. There we go. Oh, wow. So that means Steven's going to do exactly what he needs to do and sort of play those item cards before they're super... Well, before they're locked off, I should say. So it looks like we're going to see that rare candy. Then that Pidgeot here. It's going to activate Quick Search. And i tell you what, when you get... Let's say you do get item locked now uh, via Everlasting Darkness. If you can just Quick Search whatever you need anyway, you have to sort of imagine that sort of really nullifies the effect of the Everlasting Darkness. And I thought I did spy a rare candy in Steven's hand. Right now, we see him eyeing up Charizard and free fire energy. That means that there is going to be rare candy, Charizard, get the energy out, and that is going to be huge. Everlasting Darkness only does 30 damage. Yes. It's great when your opponent isn't set up, but it becomes much weaker very quickly in the middle of the game. Yeah. Um, also worth noting that Burnett is weak to dark as well. So that Burning Darkness will have no problem at plowing through a Bayonet EX regard. Oh, and that's a concession there for Matos by looks of it. Basically saying, if you get yourself that Charizard EX rolling, there's not a whole lot I can do about it. And Steven takes a very quick but very commanding game one victory here in our round six feature match. And I think we just saw what this match boils down to, Shay. Basically, Bayonet cannot stand up against Charizard. No. Two prize Pokemon, weak to darkness. When Charizard comes out, Baynet's like, nah, mate, I'm good. We're yeah, done. yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. And <laughs> obviously we know that Yagardevoir, similar position. Yep. Two prize Pokemon, weak to darkness. You need everlasting darkness. You need it early and often. If your opponent gets a Charizard out, you probably lose the game. Yeah, it's just, it's tough and... Um... Not 100% sure what else Matez could do there, but going to give himself as much, term, as much time as possible for a game two and three, and let's see what he can do. But if you're Steven now, you're thinking, even have to announce an attack and I win that game. That's not bad, <laughs> is it? You know what I mean? You, you, you don't really get many of those games, let's be honest. So Reminds me of a game we had with Tord uh, last season, or maybe the end of the season before, where he was playing a... 
Uh, he played something that had no answer to Duraladon. Oh, it was Lugia. It was there the we go. Top four, I believe that yes. was. Yeah. Lugia came down, got the parasol, and the second Lugia had, uh, excuse me, the second um, Duraladon. Duraladon, thank you, had the parasol attached. Torch just went, no, I'm good. Let's scoop. Let's let's roll. Let's game. And it was that simple. It looks like we've got a similar situation here. But given that this is game two, you've got to think Matus is going to play it out a little bit longer, see if there's an opening. Well, you know, if Matuska's going first, he can always do Envelop in Darkness, provide you get Benet into play turn two, and prevent any rare candy from ever being played. And it's worth noting, as both players do so, Steven doesn't play any TM Evolution, so we won't be able to Arvon out that. We do see a Pidgey, a Shoppit, and a Curly prize there. But let's have it. So Matuska is going first, has led the Shoppit as well. So it's going to be very easy to get Envelop in Darkness out nice and early. But yeah, Steven doesn't play TM Evolution, Ross. We can't see Arvon Evolution get your Pokemon to play that way. So if we do see the item lock come out really early, might be able to slow Steven down. His only option then would be a Charmeleon. I'm looking at Gusting and Matusa's deck. We've got a Prime Catcher and two bosses' orders, because you need to make sure that the second Charmeleon hits a field, you gust it and KO it. Yes. But also worth noting as well, Matu's list is a little bit sneaky, because we do see the Radiant Alakazam, right? That can move damage around two damage via painful spoons. Yep. And we also see the Gravity Gemstone, which when, it's, when the Pokemon it's attached to is in the active spot, the, active, the retreat cost of both active Pokemon is one colorless more. So what we could see is Steven puts down a Pokemon that isn't easy to maneuver. We can see it getting gusted into the active. We can see the gravity gemstone to sort of lock it in there, giving it an extra retreat cost. And then we can see the Raging Alakazam to painful spoon the damage off the active to where you want it to be. So if Steven tries to slowly develop a Charmeleon on the bench, Matus doesn't really actually have to gust it to start softening it up via that little combo. That's something we have to keep an eye out for. No, it absolutely is. That is one we could have a bit of a play with. So now we get the energy onto the shop. It. We got Spirit Zoom on the bench already, but that means there will be no rote on whatsoever. Matus now knows that is an option for Steven, or at least it was before the Spirit Zoom hit the bench. Yes, yeah, so this is going to be really interesting. Steven needs to have a a, a, well, just a great turn one, realistically. Otherwise, this could get out of hand really fast. We do see a lot of vacuum. We do see a forest seal stone. We see an ultra ball and a body body pop. Okay, that's not bad, actually. So we've been able to get down some basic Pokemon. Rotom, well, you, well, you can't take Rotom off that anyway. You would but, not. Yeah, you, you can't do that. That would be against the rules. So we are going to see Pidgey and Charmander. It looks like but Steven is going to do a little bit of a prize card check as well. Yeah, Rotom is not going to be coming out this game. It is not worth Steven's time to try and take out that Spirit Tomb. And while the Spirit Tomb's there, Rotom is just 190 HP, two prize Pokemon that does nothing. <laughs> it is not worth the effort, frankly. I guess it could be a Forest Seal Stone target, if nothing else, but that's a bit sad if that's what you have to put it down for. Unless you're going to win the game instantly. But the Witty Poffin does conclude, though, we're going to grab a Charmander and the Pidgey. What is. What I'm trying to see what else is in the hand there? Duskull, Ultra Ball. Lost Vacuum. Okay, this is going to be interesting now. What will this Ultra Ball grab? We do see Forest Hill Stone in hand. I would honestly be tempted to go for... I think yeah. it might be the Rotom after all that. After all that, well, I was no, not bad mouth in it. No. <laughs> but it is going to be with the Forest Steel Stone Weirdly, the way to go. Yeah, I was just about to change my thoughts there and say, actually, I would get the Rotom, and it is because of the Forest Steel Stone. You need that one Charmeleon in your deck as fast as physically possible. So having yes. a Rotom, and it is the only, and that's why I was went quiet for a second. I was just looking at the deck. Yeah. It is the only target for Forest Seal Stone. It's the only thing yeah. that can actually use it. So somewhat counterintuitively, even though the ability's turned off, you, it's the only way to guarantee Charmeleon next turn. We do see the Forest Steel Stone be a new star alchemy to grab the Iono. Going to get a six, uh, six cards. Oh, no Charmeleon there. Oh, there's no ball search there either. Um, for Steven. Did bench the dust goal there as well before playing at Iono. So I think that's going to be all she wrote. Can't use instant charge anymore. Good nope. attach of basic energy, I guess, actually, to bench Charmander, perhaps. The thing is, the later you leave it to go and get the Charmeleon, the more likely it is your opponent has got an answer to it nice and early, and you do not yeah. want that to happen. You need to get that one Charizard rolling quickly, and you know that when you get Charizard rolling, yeah. that Everlasting Darkness isn't coming out. 
because it's only doing 30 damage. As soon as you've got one, your opponent can't use Everlasting Darkness, and then you'll be able to wreck Andy again. Yeah, I was about to say, once that Charizard comes out there, that Everlasting Darkness won't be lasting very long, because <laughs> be, <laughs> that would be all she wrote, I can tell you that for free. So it looks like we are going to see Nestle going to grab another Charmander. I like that, though. We're going to attach to a benched one and pass. Okay, can Matus get this item lock rolling? We see a Prime Catcher as well um, off the top. Curlia, Refinement. Going to maybe use it. I see Trekking Shoes in the hand as well. So we do see some cards we can use. There's a Guard of Oz. Trekking Shoes first. Really, really Poffin. Oh, it's not a bad card, actually. Probably not the one you want to see, but not a bad card nonetheless. No, we're looking for gusting something up here. We don't really want Charmander in the active. You want to try and gust something up, start hitting it with Everlasting Darkness. Gravity Gemstone would be nice as well, and just try and grind this game down to an absolute halt. Nothing more than just 30 damage a turn, stop your opponent using candy. All right, there is a little backup plan here for Matusk. If Bennett doesn't want to show up for whatever reason, Young Shuppet could get involved with that Enveloping Shadow, which has a similar attack. Flip a coin if heads, you try and lock your opponent while doing 10 damage. But there's the banner! There He's go. getting involved. He's saying, don't worry about Shuppet, Shay. How about we just do Enveloping Everlasting Darkness instead? So Stephen Mal cannot play any item cards here. No, nope. so here it is all about getting a Charizard in the traditional way. Here comes your Arvin. Get to search yourself an item card and a tool. But of course, item cards aren't much use right now. Do remember the rule change that came in. Mm -hmm. Items and tools are now different categories, so tools can be used, whereas previously that would not have been the case. And that's why I said the lack of um, TM evolution is so important here. Because let's say Steven did play one of those, you just grab your evolution, attach your energy to the active, use that, and then Charmeleon straight into play. But without that, just going to have to grab the Ultra Ball off the Arvin and pop it in the hand. Can't play it, though. Just going to have to stay there. And, well, what else could you do? It's going to be a pass over to Matesk. Okay. Now, Raging Alakazam could be nice at some point to try and develop. Monkey Dory also ach achieves a similar thing. And um, I think we see, was God of our, uh, EX in hand? Another Curlier Ross, we can refine, draw another two. Love drawing as many cards as we possibly can here. That makes me very, very happy. Honestly, there's an argument. You kind of want some damage on your own Pokemon just so you've got the Monkey Dory. So what you really yep. want to do is take out that Charmeleon the second it hits the board. Yes. And Radiant Alakazam isn't going to do everything. Here comes the Monkey Dory. That is going to go down. But that means no Radiant Alakazam as well. Yeah, maybe, you know, it's, it's just concessions, isn't it? You know, can't use the Radiant Alakazam this game. Maybe it's more for other matchups. But worth noting, because this is like a guard of our deck that's had Bennett fit in it, as we do see Trek and Shoe is going to get rid of the Nest Ball, is that there is no dark energy in this list. So Monkey Dory only can able to be used via that luminous energy, as we do see at the right time there, getting attached. Yeah, we see the damage going on to the Charmander there. Here comes another Arvin. Yeah, so you can grab an item. We know there's no tool cards left, because I think we saw the... Um, Defiance Band the, uh, already Defiance taken Band out. Yeah, being taken out. So this is just going to be an item card search when you can't play items. Yeah, it's not ideal. Playing your supporter card to go and get one card that you're not allowed to play is, shall we say, not ideal. No. So at what point do you use Rotom to go and get the Charmeleon? Here? Oh, was that a split sleeve? Perhaps? It is very it's much... It was oh, a split sleeve. So not even a little bit of a split, Shay. That is completely <laughs> wrecked. Um, Never mind. We'll fix that's it. That's okay. You know, if you're a player at these big events, it's always good to have spare sleeves for this exact reason right here. So you can just get that swapped out, and then we can have play continue. Well spotted there for Mateus. So I think he's going to cut back over to us while that sleeve does get changed. This game is going to be interesting because. The Bennett has just slowed this game down a lot. Yep. Um, and with the Monkey Dory, once Gardevoir comes out, right, that's an easy way for you to damage yourself to just move it over to your opponent. How do you think this game's going to play out? At least, what is Steven going to at least try and do this turn? I mean, if I'm Steven, I want to try and get that Charmeleon because my yeah. biggest worry here is that Gardevoir EX comes out, puts some energy down on the board, would get some damage down on the board. Like yep. I said, you want some damage on the board. Monkey Dory can then start moving it around, and essentially what you do is you try and set up either the lone Charmeleon before it's evolved or all three Charmander mm -hmm. so that you can't, none of them can be evolved. They all are at risk. Any one of them goes down to a single Everlasting Darkness. Obviously, I believe we didn't see the Prime Catcher used from a Toos earlier. Nope. Why? Because you want to get that Charmeleon the second it hits the board. 
you don't always know your opponent's deck, but Charizard decks, I said at the beginning, it's a, there's a standard. It is one Charmeleon, no Pidgeotto. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying some people don't shy yeah. away from that, mm -hmm. but that's standard. Yep, so it's going to be really interesting to see how that pans out. Like Charmeleon is sort of Steven's sort of make or break, as it were. Does need to find it, and it's just... It must be so frustrating when you have Arvin to grab the ultra like this would have been what I needed. Hasn't where candy in hand. So had there not been any uh, item lock, you'd have been off to the races. You'd have been burning darkness, inferno raid, da, 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 da. but Burnett just wags the finger and says, no, 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 no. There's an item got to stay in that hand there, buddy. So I'm really intrigued to see how the rest of this game pans out. I love the ingenuity though of Matus deck though. I you know, love having it. the luminous energy, for example, having the the gravitational stone. It's just yes. so fun. Yeah, and it really is an issue of take down the Charmander slash Charmeleon before they evolve. Once Charizard comes out, it's got too much HP. It's one hit going your two prizes. You have to turn off Everlasting Darkness, which means that the, your opponent's going to have their rare candy back. Once the Charizard hits the board, the game is basically over. We saw that in game one. So for Matus here, ideally, you don't really want to knock out this Charizard. What you this Charmander, it is better to try and spread damage on all the Charmander, because mm -hmm. if there's one undamaged, that's one you evolve and hope it survives a turn. If they're all damaged, there's no easy path to evolution. So Steven did pass his turn over after getting that sleeve change. We do see a Cypher Maniac's Code Breaking. Love and this. you grab any two cards and put them to the top of your deck. Fantastic to use in combination with Refinement. So Matus did start a turn off there by using Refinement times two, discarding the Professor's Research and the Artisan to draw the top four cards of the deck. And we do see that Cypher Maniac here being played as well. What do we think he's going to put to the top? Honestly, right now, you're trying to get a Gardevoir EX out. I would imagine because that's how you get the combo rolling with Monkey Dory. Mm -hmm. Guard of War EX, and if there isn't enough energy in the discard, a way to do that as well. Because you've already got the item lock rolling, you've got your Monkey Dory with the luminous energy, but there's no damage to actually move off here, and now it's just you're going after those Charmander. If all the Charmander go down, Steven probably can't win this game. If a single Charizard comes out, oh, wow. Steven probably can't lose this game. It really is just, can Matus take out the Charmander before the Charmeleon can come out to give that evolution? So it looks like Steven, all he could do is pass as Matus was able to just grab the card he took off the Cypher, uh, Cypher Maniac deciphering, and then discard it, and then gets himself another Bayonet here as well. Matus is off to the race. Whatever he likes to do, he can do. There is the guard of I. That's what we mentioned there, Ross. And now Psychic Embrace is now live, letting you attach any extra energy, well, psychic energy from your discard pile to your psychic types, however many you like, and if you do, you put two damage counters. So we're going to swap around the banana. You're thinking, why are we doing that for? What's the point? So now we can use the Adrenoblane ability from the Monkey Dory to start softening up the Charmanders on the bench. Yeah, essentially, we didn't have enough energy in the discard, so you attach one discard, which puts two energy in the discard, which means you can pop it on the active, and then you can move the full three damage counters over to that Charmander. And that's Ooh. essentially what you're going to do here. You don't want to KO that Rotom V. Having that Rotom V in the active is perfect. You want to seven hit KO it. Oh, and we're seeing the same trick again. There's yep. not enough energy in the discard, so you retreat to put it in there. Damage your own Pokemon, but Adrenobrain it over. And this is what I said earlier. You're not trying to knock out the individual Charizard. You are, the Charmander, sorry. You are trying to get all of them at the same time. That yes. is the goal. And that would just really slam the door closed there for Steve. And so we could see the sort of retreat around as well. We do have the extra energy in play. There we go. So now Adrenobrain is going to be live for the maximum 30 damage, well, three damage counters move, I should say. We do see Professor's Choro scenario. That could be very useful for getting the Raging Alakazam into play if Matus likes. But I think right now, the, this strategy seems to be working just fine. Might not need it. No, we got six damage counts on one Charmander, three on the other. You're working on the active Rotom as well while you're at it. Next turn, you can put both the Charmander up to 60 damage on the bench, meaning that Charmeleon, if it ever does come out, will just not last. And that is a goal of your Matus here. Yeah. Make sure none of those Charmander can evolve. That is the goal. And there's a the concession there for Steven, just saying, right, I don't think Charmeleon's going to show up. I want to try and win this round. So how about I have a little concession here? Even up here at 1-1, Matus doing everything he can, turning off all the lights in the venue, as it were, with that everlasting darkness. And let's see if that darkness will keep continue here for Game 3.
Right, I've got an awkward question, Shay. I'm not sure if you are familiar with this, but I need to ask the question. Okay. We didn't see Roton V using the tool that turn. We didn't see Forest Seal Stone. Yeah. But Spirit Tomb doesn't stop Forest Seal Stone. No, it doesn't. It says po po basic Pokemon in V have no abilities. Yeah. But the Forest Seal Stone is not an ability Rotom V has. No. It's an ability Rotom V can use, mm -hmm. i.e., you can still use Forest Seal Stone when your abilities are turned off by Spirit Tomb. Yes. Why did we not see the Forest Seal Stone in that previous it was, game? It was prized. I checked the chart. Melee was not prized. I... Oh, no, the Forest Seal Stone was prized. Was it not attached to the Rotom? Oh, I thought it was attached to the road for pretty much one. the whole game. That was game one, wasn't it? What was the last game? Oh, wow. Well, guess we'll find out. I think out. we had it there, but the Charmelia, for whatever reason... Oh, didn't... no, we used it uh, turn one to grab the Irono. Straight oh, away. That was it. Thank you. That was it. That was it. That was it. That makes a lot more sense. The Charmelia never came out. And look, some of you watching are going to be thinking, well, hang on a second. We didn't really see a big back and forth game in game one or game two. And you're right. Yes. You didn't see a big back and yeah. forth in game one or game two. Because that's this matchup. Yeah. One of two things happens. Charizard comes out. Game over. Game over. Yeah. Or the Charmander to go down with the Charizard not coming out. Game over on the other way. Game We're over. We're not going to see a big back and forth. That is not how this matchup works. And going first is going to be really important. Um, I imagine Stephen would really want to be going first here, so I imagine he will be. But that's where we could see the little the little Shuppet coming in with that enveloping shadow, potentially. So here we go. Big sigh there for Matus. Okay, remember the winner of this game here, people at home, will be 6-0 and, oh and guarantee themselves a spot in the day two here in Dortmund. Oh, not Ooh, ideal. Is that a mulligan? That was a mulligan from Matus, which gives Stephen one more card with which to start his turn. And in a game where setting up wins, yep. that is absolutely huge. Really, really, you don't want to be giving your opponent extra resources. I can tell you that now. It's not a great way to play the Pokemon TCG if you can avoid it. Shuffling up here. I just can't wait to see how this pans out. It's just not a matchup. You know, we expect to see too much. The ingenuity here of the Bayonet deck, as it were, looks like. Oh. Because Charizard against Gardevoir is pretty, pretty one-sided. Yeah. It's just Charizard runs through the Gardevoir, game over. This, this gives you an option. You can still play it like a Gardevoir deck, but you can also play it like a Bayonet deck. That's what we've got here. One candy prize for Steven. Crucially, Charmeleon is not in the prizes. Uh, two copies of Shuppet with prize for my Tusk there as well. Steven, going to start us off here in our game three with that Buddy Buddy Poffin. Now, worth noting, my Tusk did not lead Spirit Tomb. So that means instant charge will be able to be used this turn. So Stephen will, at the very minimum, be able to end the turn with three extra cards. Buddy, buddy, puffing. It's fantastic, though, for getting the Pidgey and the Charmander out as well. That's a uh, Raging Alakazam. That's hard to move. Apart from Prime Catcher, I don't see any easy way of maneuvering that Professor Choro, but that's going to be stuck there for a while. Yep, it is not a card Matus played in game one or game two, which tells you everything you need to know about how useful it is in this matchup. Yep. So you've got a card which is hard to move that you don't really want to use, stuck in the active. That is, frankly, not an ideal situation. So now Steven starts off with a Rotom. We've got a Pidgey and a Charmander and a Nest Ball coming down as well here. So this is at least going to be a lot of basics for Steven. Yep, that's all you want to do. Get these basics out the deck now. So if you're driving to draw into your Charmeleon later on, you have less ones there. And we're going to grab the Dust Skull as well. It's pretty much a staple now in these Charizard decks, that sort of Dust Noir line, because it's so useful with cards like Briar and Defiance Band as Belt, I should say, as well. Ultra Ball as well. This could go and grab the Charmeleon. This could go and grab the Charmeleon, ready for turn two. And then your base, because also, Stephen here is probably thinking the same thing you are. Well, hang on a second. The only way to get that Radiant Alakazam out of the active is with a Professor Turo or a Prime Catcher. I've not seen anything else. Well, if I get the Charmeleon ready to go, I force my opponent. I basically say they cannot Turo and Iono. Yeah. But it looks like instead playing a bit safer, just yeah. going for the Charmander. Also a pretty good call here, just, you know... Bit of extra protection. Yeah, I guess if you were to take Charmeleon and then I got Iron Ode, you'd be very sad because <laughs> it's going to go straight to the bottom. But we are going to see the instant charge there being used. One, two, and three for Steven and over to Matesco. All right, let's see what he has here. I'm intrigued. So we do see Ultra Ball going to start the turn off as your Professor's Research as well. Uh, and that's going to be a Curlier and a Basic Energy Hitting the Discard Pile. Basic Energy Hitting the Discard Pile is fantastic for these Gardevoir EX decks because that's exactly where they want those Basic Energy to be. 
Yeah, put them in the discard, attach them from the discard. Job is a good one. Then you get the damage on, which you can move with Monkey Dory to your opponent's Pokemon. And the synergy is beautiful. That extra damage, honestly, between Drift Blim, or Drift Loon, sorry, yeah. Screamtail and Monkey Dory, these Gardevoir decks have turned that negative of the damage into a huge positive. Yeah, they just maneuver that. We saw it, well, we saw it in game two, didn't we? Yes, uh, we did. Matus was just purposely putting that damage into play and just adrenaline braining them straight off with that Monkey Dory. So being able to just soften up those bench Pokemon without having to play cards like Boss's Orders. We are yeah. going to see Ultra Ball concluding. going to grab that Shop It. Worth noting, there are two copies of Shop It Prize. There's only two available. One of them has just been taken from that Ultra Ball. Yeah, and energy. Now, this is where it gets awkward. You need an energy. You need a way to move into the active. And you still need to flip ahead. Even if yeah. you pull all that off, you still need to flip ahead. Shopper is not a guaranteed item lock. It is a flip, and you get an item lock. Well, if not, I'm loving that, uh, was it Trick or, trick or Boost uh, promo there on the Shop It? Oh, Trick or Trade Boost. That's the one. Trick or Trade. Bundle. That's the one. The Boost of Bundle. Come on. Love seeing that little pumpkin there on that corner of the Shop It. So it looks like we are going to see the shop it being taken. I think Matus was just doing a little bit of a prize check search. Don't mind it. That's what you're going to do when you get this far into an event and you're doing well. So, so there is a world in which we see Professor Chori scenario, attach, enveloping shadow, heads, and Matus could be straight back in the driver's seat if that happens, but it's a risky play. We're asking a lot at this stage for that to come off. And you're right, that is absolutely in the round of possibility. There's another world where Matus doesn't pull that off, and Stephen does what yeah. he did in game one, where they go, Candy, Pidgeot, Candy, Charizard, yay, I win the game! Oh, what we are seeing! Oh, we oh, actually oh, got Here we go! Oh, oh, Professor Turo. Okay, here's the flip. Huge Here we go, flip. big coin flip. Here we go! It's and a heads! heads! Little shop it that could! Here we go! <laughs> With that enveloping shadow turning, making it dark here in the venue, Stephen... Cannot play any item cards. Did top deck the Charmeleon, though, might I say. Oh. But oh, wow. The little shop. Look at that. There's a lone shop it there, everyone. Uh, if that shop it goes down, it would have been game over. But the Charmeleon has been found this Steven. So the pendulum of power might be swinging back. But oh, my goodness. My heart rate couldn't handle it after that head. Oh, that 60 HP on that shop it. Very important right now. There is actually a lone shop it in play. Uh, but the Dusclops, good news. Wait a second. Oh, well, does 50. Yeah, but then Pidgey Gus for 20. Could we see Dusclops doing 50 to shop it and then Pidgey doing 20 and if then getting get, the KO? If you can get the Rotom out of the active. I think that I don't think there's a way to get the Rotom out of the active, but I'm just saying. Yeah, that, yeah we could. Well, imagine for, that. Shop it into Pidgey for game. That will. Tell you who had that on their bingo card. Sh uh, Spirit Tomb has come down. Professor's research has been played there. Restart was you. So Matez will be able to start developing a board here. Oh, <laughs> this is a game three, folks. Here we go. Oh, uh, there was a world in which you could potentially thought an into a Pidgey, but that was about the only play Steven had to pull off that last turn. So here we go. We've got. Have we got the Bayonet EX yet? No, we no, haven't we got haven't it got just yet. yet. We do have a Shop It and a Route off of the Buddy Buddy Poffin, though. So that's all well and good. That could have been a little bit nerve-wracking for Matus last term. But the good news is, starting to get all the basics out now. Oh, OK. Now, we would love to see a Bayonet here. We don't want to have to be using Shop It again. We is really there an Ultra Boy in hand? I think there was. Oh, I see trekking shoes. I see Maybe trekking. there wasn't. OK. Trekking shoes for Bayonet. Oh, oh, oh. oh, no, it's a counter catch. I apologize. There's no... Okay, this is... There's, some there's no out. Luminous energy and monkey dory and... There's no out to a bayonet I yet. They took that... Oh, but it was an ultra ball off the trekking shoes. Oh, my goodness. The restart into the research, into the trekking shoes, into the ultra ball. This is a game free, everybody. Luminous energy attached to the bench and everlasting darkness. Stephen Mao is still item locked. That's a pretty brutal Ultra Ball, though. Had to get rid of a Monkey Dory and a Gardevoir EX, both True. cards that were very, very useful in the previous game. And Steven here, here's the deal. You don't have item cards, but you still have access to supporters. Arvin. You don't get to use your Rotom. You don't have Pidgeot. Arvin off the top! Sorry to cut you off there, though. So Arvin could find the Forest Seal Stone, and that could grab the Charizard EX, I believe. Yes, that feels like it will work. We said about the interaction between games there. It turns oh. off abilities. Oh, we see an Iono as well here. Okay, maybe the Forest Hillstone isn't available, I would imagine. 
Now, Forest Seal Stone can be played under Item Lock. It can be used under Spirit Tomb Lock. It's a bit awkward, but it does work. Here's a rare candy. That's useless. Ooh. Nest Ball, useless. Boss's orders and another useless Nest Ball here. Oh, no, under normal circumstances, that Ultra Ball be exactly what Steven is looking for. But thanks to Everlasting Darkness, remember, the uh, item cards cannot be played. So there's actually no playable cards there in that hand. And this is where it gets awkward. You're not going to have Monkey Dory available if you're Matus. You're, that what you saw last game is not coming back this game. Firstly, there's no Rare Candy and there's no Curlier on the board. Secondly, you don't have space for the Monkey Dory. It, it's awkward. You're actually going to have to do it with Everlasting Darkness. So you need to kind of gust now and free hit KO Charmeleon. Yeah, it's not going to be the easy sort of bench dissecting that we saw in game one with that Professor Chora being played. I don't think there's any power pads, so we won't be able to reuse that again. Maybe we can start to see the gravitational gem, uh, the gravity gemstone being used to try and lock that Rotom there. That could also be an option. But uh, definitely not going to be the easy way out. We do see another Iono being played here. Okay, now, that's interesting, because we know, well, Matus can guess that Steven didn't draw very well off yep. that Iono, so didn't this could be risky. If and when the cards go into the bottom of the deck, you are seeing new yes. cards every time. This is getting Steven closer to a potential Charizard here. Ooh, I don't know. Two Pidgeot, Two. a boss's orders, and a Buddy Buddy Poffin, I believe that is. Yeah, and an Ultra Ball at the front, but you're right there. There is no Charizard in hand right now. Prime Catcher would be prime, but it's not there. You just see the everlasting darkness there from a Charizard off the top, Ross. He's got it off of the top. Here comes a Charizard. Now we use the ability, and oh. this is a point where it gets awkward. Now, is there any way that Matus can lock that Rotom in the active, move the damage off with Alakazam, yep. and play an incredibly yep. long... Oh, for sure. That's definitely possible. That's yeah. what the Raging Alakazam is for. But you're doing free damage a turn, and you're healing. You're basically 20. taking 20 yeah, off. Yeah, so you're still leaving 10 on. It's not a perfect. Moot point. It's already been retreated with the fire energy. Now Charizard comes up. We're going to see the KO on the Bane net. We don't need the early concession like we did in game one, but is there any way Matus comes back here? You can no longer use Everlasting Darkness. That attack no longer does enough damage. Do you have an attacker that can take this Charizard out? You've taken no prizes so far. I think the only way we can get out of this is if we see a, a boss's order or something to that effect into the Rotom, lock it in the active via the Gravity Gemstone, and just, like you said, try and maneuver the damage off. I don't... There's no way to sort of get rid of this Charizard EX immediately. Have to go around it. No, no, no mistake about it. As we do see the Super, we're going to get back that Rage of Alakazam. That's going to be crucial for that game plan to work, as well as the um, Monkey Dory and the Guard of our EX. That is Matus' only play here. We cannot just let this Charizard sit in the active. It's hitting for weakness. It detonates everything it wants. It does. There's no rare candy, though, in Matus' list. There's a lot has to be cut to make room for the Bayonet. There's no rare candy, so you are going to have to evolve up the traditional way. Was it a Curlier last turn, or was that a this turn evolution? Uh, the cur uh, do you mean the Rolt? Oh, the Curlier the active, in the active. I think the active. That was last turn. Okay. So a Gardevoir EX would work here. We get the Luminous Energy onto the Monkey Dory. There okay. is the Iron O. So it's going to be into Prime Catcher here, then, realistically. That's the only gusting option yeah. you've got. It's going to have to be Prime Catcher Or here. Counter Catcher. There's one oh. Counter Catcher. So that is still an option. I think I got put to the bottom. Well, we do see the Prime Catcher of okay. the Iono, though. So that for Pheasant Dipty, which is a highest HP thing, which is really not going to be attacking. You need to see the, the gravitational stone, ideally, to get the, the sort of most ideal version of the sort of lock here, as it were, though. Because we'll Pheasant Dipty has a one retreat cost, so does Rotom. So that would just be a attach retreat, and Charizard comes flying straight back in the active. Yeah, Dusclops has two, but it can, of course, KO itself. So you don't want to be trying to block that in the active. So this could be a very important curlier here. We would love to see that Gravity Gemstone. Not a card we see terribly often. New card from Stellar Crown, as it were. We'd love to see it here. There's though. the Gardevoir. Here we go. There's the Counter Catcher onto the Char... Uh, excuse me, the Charmander. Well, I guess if you item lock, that Charmander can't... <laughs> can't... Oh, he got it off the top! The, gra the Gravity Gemstone! The that is huge. And now you can start using Monkey Dory and the... Um, 
and the damage there from the active as well and really try and chip away at some of these Pokemon. It is a big uphill struggle for Matus. Make no mistake about it, but there is there a we go. chance. I'm telling you, there's a chance. We do, we see the gravitation. Oh, Stephen having to pick it up and read it. Yeah. So in case we don't know, at home, while it's attached to the Pokemon in the active, both active Pokemon's a treat cost is uh, increased by one. So Charmander now will retreat for two. So maybe going after Charmander here, what you can do is put damage onto that, then you sort of bring up the Fez and Dippity. Um, oh, they did top tech. Oh, no, can't play the Lost Vacuum, of course. But yeah, yeah so, you, so you get some damage onto the Charmy, uh, Charmander, move it off, and then you bring up the Fez and Dippity. So you're sort of getting more turns or something in the active that Steven can't move. Yeah, quite possibly here. You still do have a counter catcher, which is going to be up for the rest of the game. Yeah. If you're taking prizes, you are taking them right at the end. You're looking for like that big explosive six prize turn, ideally. You do not ever want to leave a situation where Steven can go, I'm going to promote my Charizard yeah. and attack. Yeah, we do not want to see that. Okay, here comes Arvum. And let's see what the Arvum grabs here. Oh, was that? Oh, the Forest Hill Stone is in deck. Um, Defiance Banner, I haven't seen it. Obviously, you can still grab an item. Talk about it, I don't know. You just can't play the item, unfortunately. Yep. You but can you can still item. grab whatever you like. Yeah, you can grab the item and the tool, but you cannot play the item. You can play the tool. So, you know, it's not all bad. There's options. So, you could grab the Forest Hill Stone. Yeah. It's a Rotom. Grab any card you like. Thing is, I, I don't realistic, realistically see a magic. Oh, Stephen does play Professor's Troll, I believe. No, uh... I don't. Oh no, Thornton. Sorry. Yeah, there's a, so Thornton could be used to switch for another basic. But what basic would we want to switch into here? Nothing really oh, helps yeah, very true, that's much. A great point, actually. Um, like, at, when I was yeah. looking for the Pidgey Donk, you could Thornton into the Pidgey to get the the cute little uh, KO there. That would have been amazing. That would have been really fun. But, no, there's no good retreater here. They're all going to have a retreat cost of two. Yeah. And that is going to be a bit of an issue. So, Matus, I mean, look, we, we've got a longer game here than we saw in game one, where it was, you got a Charizard, good game. Yeah, this is going to be interesting. So, let's see. Does have the Forest of Stone in hand? Obviously, we know that. Ideally, you want to use it now, so Mateus can't iron it, uh, iron it away, or at least attach it, at the very least. But, yeah, I'm not 100% sure. There's, I don't think... And that's mistaken. There's like some sort of magic one card answer here from Steve. I don't think that exists right now. No. So let's just see. You're having to think, how do I get out of this? Probably wasn't prepared to play around the gravitational gemstone, as it were. I mean, I wouldn't have been, that's for sure. No. The gravity gemstone there is it's really putting in a shift. Yeah. Honestly, I let's would love, if I was Matus, I would love to have a Radiant Alakazam on the board as well yeah. to really make the most of Monkey Dory and Radiant Alakazam because I'm not putting enough damage on every turn. Here's a couple of cards drawn with Curlia. And... There's oh. I mean, event space. Is, if event space opens up, something's gone very, very wrong here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, worth noting, there has been a time extension added to this game. About one minute, I would imagine that is due to those sleeves that had to get changed. Here is a boss's orders. Okay, so okay. this is... So there's now one boss's orders and a prime and a counter catcher remaining in the deck. And here we go. As you mentioned, it was going to be into that pheasant dipity. That is the sort of maximum amount of HP that Matus can sort of manipulate via a Jenna Brain and an everlasting darkness and just start softening up stuff on the bench. And so that Charmander is going to be the target from that Adrenal Brain as we do see everlasting darkness onto the active. Okay, over to Steven. Does Star Star Alchemy available? Of course. Uh, yeah. But nope, it's going to be a pass back over. I like the idea of having a Radiant Alakazam and pulling off a 19-hit KO on that Pheasant Dipti while spreading damage around with Radiant Alakazam and your Monkey Dory. That, that would be the ideal here, but there's just not a bench space for it. No, we've already seen Professor Chora being played as well, right? So... Yep, we not, have indeed. not going to be an option. You cannot knock yourself out via Psychic Embrace. You can't knock out your own Pokemon to sort of throw at the bench spot. It's not an option. So, yeah, it looks like we're going to see a refinement. It looks like potentially Steven is consulting a discard pass, seeing what resource Matos has available. But no, it looks like we're going to see the everlasting darkness instead. Oh, no, or not debating it. Just well, we of... haven't used Monkey Dory yet this game. Oh, but see, here's an issue. Last game, we were able to switch between Bayonet, retreating, yeah. discarding energy, and that was fueling the Monkey Dory. We don't have that this game. So there's only so many uses you can have of Monkey Dory. I thought of a line that Matos might 
or could work towards, perhaps. You can manipulate the damage to carry this Charmander eventually. And provided Steven doesn't bench another one, you could then gust up the Charizard, use Poltergeist, and KO it while there's no Charmander left. That could be an option, potentially. Could be something to keep an eye out for. Yeah, that is absolutely an option. And then the Charmander, the, you know, items would be on. But it doesn't we, matter, yeah. <laughs> we need to know how many trainer cards are in the deck. So, Poltergeist does 60 for each trainer card of any description. Yep. So, you're looking for what Charizard's got, like, 330, so six. Tell you what, worth noting, if Matus is going to try and play this sort of long game, Hasn't got that many cards left in deck because of the refinement uses, so cannot really afford to sit here and do this 19, uh, 19 turn KO, as we mentioned. So he's going to have to start, well, going to have to start trying to win the game at some point. Ooh, Prime Catcher off the top. That right there can maneuver the Pheasantipity. Right, with the three damage counters on Charizard. Okay, here oh, we go. If you bring up the Charizard, if there's five trainer cards in hand, you can get a KO with Poltergeist while using Adrenobrain to KO the Charmander on the bench. That is an option. If there's one energy in the discard, which there now is, you can guard a wire and energy, Adrenobrain to KO the Charmander, and then you prime catcher the Charizard up, and yep. if Steven's got five trainer cards in hand, Poltergeist will KO. That, I believe, is the line that is a potential out here. The only problem with that line is, though, it does get really heavily punished by Radiant Charizard. <laughs> it gets very heavily punished by Radiant Charizard, but what else are you going to do right now? You're right. <laughs> Actually, I'll tell you what else you're going to do. Look at the board. Two prizes on Pheasant Dipty. Right. Two prizes on Rotom. Yeah. One prize on Charmander. Mm -hmm. One prize on Pidgey. Did the math, Shay. How many prizes is that? That'd be a nice round six right there. That would be a nice round six. Although, right, Pheasant Dipty's about to get KO'd this turn. So you need to start working on that Rotom V. Or might I suggest maybe bringing it up a little bit? Okay, so we're really just piling damage on here to make the most of Adrenobrain. So now we're going to be using that onto. Okay, love this. KO. KO the Pheasant Dipty mid turn. And now, if the wrong Pokemon comes active, you do still have access to Prime Catcher to get the yes. right Pokemon active. Yep, that's exactly what we're looking at. This is a chess match here. And yeah, I guess you could always promote the Dust Clops because you can just KO it and get yep. it straight back out of the active at the very least. That would give Matusk a prize card, though. Put I love the three. cheekiness of this play. Matus is going to Prime Catcher right now. We know this. It was just like, if you put the right Pokemon active, yeah. I can save my Prime Catcher. But we see the retreat. That's basically saying, when I Prime Catcher, my Bayonet becomes back active again. But I love the cheekiness of hoping your yeah. opponent puts oh. a one active. Oh, of course. Then we do see the Prime Catcher, exactly as you said. It has to be on the road, Tom. It's the only play here. And this, I think, is how the game ends if Matus is going to win. We going to do 30 damage of Everlasting Darkness. The Rotom is not KO'd yet, but it's three turns away from being KO'd. And then we will need to a brain twice, though. Okay. And can we do that in one turn? Adrenobrain twice? And well, we need to KO both the Charmander and the Pidgey here. For the, six pri for, the, for the six prizes total. Oh, okay. So you're going to KO the Rotom of Everlasting Darkness in three turns' time. Yeah. But you're going to need to Adrenobrain to KO on two different turns, which will open up a bent space for Steven. Might not be an issue, but it's not the ideal way to go about it. It'll probably be all right. There we do. See so Duskull getting benched as well. We're going to see a pass. How many cards left in, Mat in Mateus's deck? Is that only two? I feel as if it's going to be on a clock here. You can't obviously deck yourself out. Does he? I guess he might be able to iron out, actually. He doesn't? Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, Mateus needs this turn and then two more to oh, okay. win. If there's two cards in deck, that's the perfect number. Matus is going to be fine. Matus is going to win in two turns okay. from now. Okay. This turn, you do 30. Next turn, you do 30 in KO Pidgey or Charmander. And then the turn after, you KO Rotom and Charmander and or Pidgey, and that's the game. It looks like we're going to see a Super Rod being taken off the Arvin. Obviously, can't play that. Oh, okay. If, okay, no, Matus might have one card too few in deck. He needs three turns from now. Right. I mean, it looks like there's two there, but, you know, there could be more. It's hard to tell from this sort of vertical angle. We do see Super Rod being taken there off the Arvin. Um, 
Yeah, it's looking rough for Steve. We're just going to have to pass it back over. So there's only one card left. OK. It's got so... to be recovery or something in Matus's hand. He's been playing way too carefully yeah. to lose by deck out here. So now the Charmander goes down. And there is a prize. And now we see the Rotom going up to 130. So two turns from now, we're going to get the win. You can just, yeah, move it off and then Poltergeist for game as well into the Rotom. So there's plenty of ways. Oh, yeah, yeah the Poltergeist, Poltergeist one Geist turn early. Well. Of course you can, Jay. <laughs> Good shout. Here's Forest Hill Stone. This could grab the Thornton into Pheasant Dippity, perhaps. Save yourself... Save yourself the active. Oh, no, but Thornton swaps the damage as well, doesn't it? So yeah, yeah. that wouldn't help. <laughs> it would unfortunately not make a huge difference here. There's no supporter which is going to switch it like we see with Professor Turo or Penny or things of that nature. They're not in the deck. Hmm. Yeah, this is an interesting one, isn't it? We do see Artisan going to grab the Charmander. Thornton was taken off the start alchemy. I don't see what you even thought it into. I'm not seeing any kind of line there. Fez would give you an HP boost at the very least, right? Yeah, but you know you're losing the Poltergeist at this yeah. point. I mean, look at the hand. There's no way there aren't... Yeah, yeah. What we got? We got 130. We had two. There's no way there aren't two trainer cards <laughs> in Stephen's hand, Shay. Play to your outs. It's got to play to your outs. And one of them swapped out. Yeah. Uh, okay, so oh, what... here we go. This will tell us. This will tell us, right? So Thor and swap a basic Pokemon in play with one from the discard pile. Oh, Radiant Charizard could take a big KO. Radiant Charizard. Wait, that... no, it needs enough prize energy. cards haven't been taken. Yeah, no. that doesn't work. You need three, you need four prize cards taken for it to be a single energy attacker. Only three have been taken. So Charizard will need two energy here, and there's no energy already on there. So Combustion Blast doesn't even work, but it is a single prize Pokemon. So you're basically saying to Matus, well, now you're only taking two prizes. Oh, collapse stage to remove that Pidgey. Oh, I am loving the play in this game. Steven goes, you can take three prizes next turn. Unless I get rid of the Pidgey and turn my two prizer into a one prizer, and now what? There is still a route to victory here, though, because that Radiant Charizard... Ah, it's got 50 HP. No, 50... No, you can Adrenabrain yeah, onto the Charizard and then Poltergeist to the EX. Yeah, yeah, you can still do that. That's still a line. That's still a line, I should say. And I believe there's one boss's orders left in Matusa's deck. We do see the Cursed Blast gone to the Guard of our EX. As oh, well. but now there is no great way of getting the KO on that Charizard on the bench. That's the only two prize attacker. Oh, we saw the combustion because of the cursed blast. The combustion blast was live. Boss's orders for game now, and the last prize to use Miracle Force to close the game out. Uh, what a play there from Steven using cursed blast to activate combustion blast. KO the Bennett, but Matusk was able to close the game out with Miracle Force with the Guard of Art because. That curse blast put Matus down to one prize card. A little bit, you know, you have to do what you gotta do if you're Steven. Matus could just close the game up. Yeah, giving up that prize was that was exactly what was needed. You took the prize away from the Pidgey, but you gave it back yes. with the Dust Globs, and that gave Matus wow. the victory. That was one of my favorite games I have seen yeah. in a long time, Jay. Game one, Jarazard Scoop, I'll be honest with you. Nah. Game two, I'm just gonna sit here until you give up trying to find the Charmeleon. Fine. Game three, though. Oh, game three. We yeah. saw the Charizard come out. So Matus had to try and maneuver around that. Turn after turn after turn. Spreading damage. Never letting that Charizard come up. But it fell apart at the end. You had to kind of break yeah. that lock. And then Steven came out with a collapsed stadium with a Thornton into the Radiant Charizard. But then Matus was able to navigate around that as well. And that was an extremely close best of three. It was. And after a, a pretty kind of uneventful game one and game two, Oh, we got a money's worth in game three there, Shay. Yeah, that was incredible. We did say, you know, when the Charizard X comes out, it could be lights off, as it were, for Mateus, but was able to navigate his way out of there was a very tough ask there. And Steven's last turn there was incredible, using the Cursed Blast to put Mateus down to one price. Now Combustion Blast is live to KO the active Bennett. And if Mateus didn't have the boss's orders, Steven probably would have won that game just right there and then, realistically. Yep. But he did, and then Matus was able to win that game three. But that game three, what a masterclass. We saw 
Maturko drawing into the gravity gemstone on that exact turn he needed it, was able to use that adrenaline as much as, as as much as he needed to as well, and really had to navigate, you know, not being able to have the two banana outs, so wasn't able to do that sort of retreat switching with the psychic embrace to sort of fuel adrenaline over and over. Just a masterclass, quite honestly. Oh, no, it was absolutely a masterclass. And the end of that game happened so fast. You know what, Shay? I think we need a replay. Yeah, we do. So let's go back to this game. And, and I'm going to be honest with you, there's not going to be much from game one, because <laughs> game one was not all that much of a game. We might get to see the Charizard coming out. Yeah. But that is about the most we're going to see. We see the Duskull hitting the bench. And then, of course, we are going to see Rare Candy, Charizard, and that was literally yeah, yeah, game yeah. one. <laughs> I didn't realize the cap was so small there. Into game two, Matez was able to develop that uh, item lock really early, and Steven was just, you know, stuck. You know, didn't have many Pokemon sort of absorb this damage, was forced to use that star alchemy really early, and then used, uh, used with that Adrenal Brain, was able to just maneuver those bench Charmander out of play, and Steven, wasn't drawing that much, and Matus was able to just keep applying that pressure, and Steven said, I've had enough of that. But then we got on to game three, Ross. And game three was a very different beast indeed. We did Ooh. see the yes. very awesome early Professor Turo scenario to get that shop it. We had the huge flip, which came up heads to item lock <laughs> Steven. Very early, you see Matus celebrating there. Yeah. Oh, we got it full screen, because it was a huge flip there. And then we got the grind. We got the one KO with Charizard, I should say. Yep. Big KO, two prizes. And then we got the grind. We're everlasting darkness. We're adrenaline energy onto the bench. Matus's bench was not ideal. It wasn't like it was in game two, but able to piece something together. We saw the KO on the Charmander. And we got down two free prizes remaining, but then the Collapse Stadium takes the Pidgey off the board, the Thornton into the Radiant Charizard to get the KO, but then... The Cursed Blast as well to attack with Combustion Blast, but then we just saw the Psychic Embrace being able to power up Miracle Force, boss's orders, close that game out. That game three, quite honestly, that replay for game three could have been so much longer. There was so much sort of two <laughs> in front. We didn't even get to see the, the Gravity Gemstone, because that was, you know, that was so impactful. He needed, Matus needed to find it exactly that turn and was able to do it as well. That game three, golly. That was a great game.